praise the Lord, friends and my subscribers. Welcome to today's uh, message, Lango Promises that God has for you and me. And uh, today I have a special message just to encourage you in line with what you could be going through or what you are experiencing. So we shall start by singing Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine, and of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for today that you have given us an opportunity once again to just come and be encouraged with your word, particularly as we think about your servant Abraham and Sarah. We pray that God, you shall speak to my listener, whoever is watching me wherever from and whatever they are going through, Lord, that this message will encourage them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So welcome my friends and uh, we thank God because of his faithfulness. Let me put this here and we thank God because of his faithfulness and uh, um, it has been good to us. We thank God for the few weeks that we've been away. we have been uh, just praying and praying and contemplating um, because of what he, who he is and what he has for each one of us. And so I want us today just to go and look into the book uh, of Genesis, the first book of, of the Bible, Genesis. And I want to challenge you guys, you can start reading the, wide, the Bible and if you have anything that you would wish us to, to comment on or uh, encourage you as you read the Bible in difficulty, you may encounter anything good, please share and comment as we encourage one another. So Genesis chapter 17 um, from uh, chapter 17, starting to read at verse 15. The Bible says, God also said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of the nation. Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell face down and laughed. <laughs> And say to himself, Will son be born to a man a hundred years old? Huh? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of ninety? Uh -huh. And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael, I want you to underline that, might live under your blessings. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, you a son, and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his number. He will be the father of 12 rulers and I will make him into great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac only, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year when he had finished speaking with Abraham 
God went up from him. So my friends, I don't know, the topic that I'm talking about this day is, can you really help God? It's a question, can you really help God? Can you really help God? Um, the promise of a son came to Abraham and Sarah years after the original promise. If you read chapter 12, 2 to 3. For a quarter of a century, this couple had waited patiently until hope of having a child seemed lost. So these guys had waited and waited. Imagine for a quarter of a century. I talk of a quarter of a century. That's a long time of waiting. Until all hope of having a child seemed lost. You can imagine? I know we know. Sarah, after all, was 90 years old. Show, show, my show, grandmother. Abraham was a hundred years. Following the legal standards of their culture, Abraham had a son through Hagar. Sarah had, had made God, it seemed, was of the hook. Verse 17 and 18. So, Sarah and Abraham, during those times, tradition said, now that I cannot have a child, you just have it. Remember, by the time they are having that child, God had already promised Abraham a son or a child so friends I don't know for how long you have waited for something and then you feel like I think I can uh, I can do it by my way you have waited on God you're like ah God I'm giving up on you I don't want to wait on you anymore so you have waited and waited but it's not forthcoming Abraham and Sarah were in that position 90 years old woman and a hundred years old man, these promises had not yet been fulfilled. But God said, I must fulfill my promise through Isaac. You cannot help God. You cannot help God. Listen how God responded. <clears throat> God responded in ways that <clears throat> defied logic. Sorry. He reiterated his promise that Sarah will have this child in her old age. I want you to go and read chapter 21, 1 to 7. In her old age, God reiterated, I have promised and I will keep it. I have promised and I will keep it, no matter what the circumstance was. And then, this was God's promise fulfilled in God's time and in God's way. Abraham and Sarah's help was not rendered. Let me repeat again. It was God's promise fulfilled in God's time and executed in God's way. You cannot help God, no matter what you do. That is response number one of how Sarah responded. God responded, sorry. In the other side, Abraham and Sarah found that there is no substitute for God's revealed will. So one thing you need to know, friends, when it's God's timing, it's God's timing. You cannot substitute God's will. So if God has promised you a job, even in this time of Corona, friends, it will come. Praise the Lord. If God has promised you a husband or a wife, whether it has taken forever, it will come. If God has promised you a promotion for those who are working, regardless of this situation, your promotion will come. If God has promised to take care of your sicknesses, no matter how long it has taken, no matter what the doctors have said, Remember, these guys tried to apply logic. Logic did not make sense. It is what God says. Praise the Lord. So, they decided to take matters into their own hands to help God. But, God was not in that plan. I want you to take a moment, my brothers and sisters. See how God responded in a very, very interesting way. Have you ever tried to help God in whatever he has? You have waited and you're saying, now God, I want to take a shortcut. It will not work. Wait on God's time. You have seen that men are not coming your way. You have decided to go and look for any man's life, right, left, center. It will not work. Whatever God has for you is what will come to pass. So I want you to be encouraged. No matter how long it takes, it will be fulfilled. Don't help God. Don't try to do it your own way. Let God have his own way. It has taken long, yes, but it will come to pass. 
So friends, I pray that even in your waiting on God, in this difficult season where job losses, families are going through challenges, wait on God. Don't take action which will be against God's will. How do you wait on God? Number one, by prayer. Seek God in prayer. Number two, by patiently reading his word. And then number three, surrounding yourself with people who will encourage you, not take you out of God's will. So I want to pray that you will not try to help God, but allow the will of God to take charge in your life. I want to pray with you today, even in your journey as you wait for God's timing. Remember, it's always the best. Whether it is sickness, whether it is family issue, whether it is job issue right now, wait on God. He will show up. Even when these storms are like that, like this, He will show up. Thank you because I know you'll be encouraged to wait on God. He will come for you, my brother, and your testimony will come. Let us pray. I thank you, God, because of whoever has listened and watched, Lord, your word. And I pray that God has the wait on you, Jesus Christ. Help them, God, because they cannot help themselves. The help of human beings, Lord, has an end. We acknowledge the fact that, Lord, it is a difficult situation right now. But because you love us, you care for us, God, you will show up in our hour of need. For those who have waited on you, Lord, patiently for healing, Father, send their healing. For those who have trusted you for spouses, Lord, send them their spouses. For those, Lord, who have given up on various addiction, Lord, I pray that you will make a way. Release them, Lord, from bondage of addictions. I thank you, God, because your time is always the best. So help us to wait on you and not to do things in our own will. We praise you, we worship you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, you cannot help God. Wait on his timing. Don't think of alternatives. It's only what God has for you that will come to pass. God bless you and see you in the next encouragement.